everybody, it's Miss Susanna. Welcome back. This is your mind body video of the week. We have been doing the elements of dance and today we'll be exploring the element of time. Get your watch, get your phone, get your clock. Just kidding. You don't need any of that because we all experience time through the body and we are going to be exploring a little bit of that today. Okay, here we go. Uh, this is the elements of dance graphic organizer that we have been looking at the last couple of weeks. And today we are looking at the column that says time. So a dancer dances when? Through time, right? And let's look at all the things we could mean when we talk about time. So first of all, duration. How long does the dance last? Or how long does each movement within the dance last? It could be brief, it could be short, or it could be long, right? Any action that we do, any move that we do, we could do it for a short amount of time or for a long amount of time. So that's when we're talking about duration. How long does it last? Speed. Is the movement fast or is it slow? right? Any movement we do, it could be on the faster side or the slower side. So how much time is it taking up? A faster movement takes up less time. A slower movement takes up more time. Next, the beat. Are we dancing to a beat that is steady, very rhythmic, or a beat that's uneven? Maybe there's accents and then it stops and then an accent at an unpredictable time, and then it stops, right? What is the beat like? How does that influence our perception of time? Tempo, similar to speed, is the tempo going at a quick pace or a slow pace? Maybe there's some musicians out there, and maybe you've ever practiced an instrument before, and you know that you can, with the same music, go at a faster tempo, or a slower tempo. Accent, right? There could be an accent in different parts of the music, and there can also be accents with different parts of the dance, right? There might be something that's flowing along and all of a sudden, boom, there's an accent. And this affects also our perception of time and how we use time. Okay, rhythmic patterns. Right? Again, for my musicians out there, you know that different uh, kinds of music have different meters or different rhythmic structures. Two, four, six, eight, etc. We're not going to get into all that today because we don't have time for a whole extra music class, but that affects the way the dancers are also expressing the music. Is it right on a rhythm? Right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or is it free flowing and it's not on a specific rhythm? Maybe the dancers are following their breath or the sense of being on a wave. Or maybe there's some words, like maybe we're dancing to poetry and we're listening for the words to tell us when to move, right? So some dance uses rhythm in a very specific way and some dance does not and it uses a more free-flowing sense of time. Finally, timing relationships. Okay, when we're talking about a dancer's use of music and use of time, we could use words like before, after, right? Are you hitting the beat on the count? Are you going too early, too late, before, after? Unison, are we going in sync? sooner or faster than. Great. So these are all different ways we can talk about how a dancer is using time. Okay, so now let's try it. Let's explore time. So everybody stand up. That's right. Stand up, push your chair away, make sure you have a little bit of room to move. Maybe stick your arms out in a T, twist around, make sure you're not gonna hit anything. 
just make sure you've, you're safe and have a little bit of space to move. Okay, so let's think back to when we explored all of those actions. Let's choose one. I'm gonna say clap, easy. Okay, let's go down the list of all these things about time and just explore what we could do. So let's clap for a brief amount of time, go. Now clap for a long amount of time. Go. Maybe you're still clapping. Okay, great. People might have chosen different amounts of time to clap for, and that's great. Now speed. Can you clap really, really fast? Now clap at a slow speed. Mm-hmm, great. Okay, now let's try clapping at a steady beat. Now try clapping at an uneven beat. Yours might be similar to mine or it might be different. Unpredictable, right? Okay, let's try going at a quick tempo and a slow tempo. Great, try some clapping where the accent comes at different times. I'm not gonna do it, I'm gonna listen to yours, go. Interesting. Great. Let's try a couple of different rhythmic patterns. We might have a steady 2-4 uh, beat. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Or we could have like a waltz rhythm in a 3-4. One, two, three. 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 Excellent, great. Okay, now instead of clapping, I want you to choose an action or a kind of move, yes? It's up to you. Everybody's is gonna be different. So don't look at me, just choose your own, okay? Choose whatever you like and try it for a brief amount of time. Go. Great, now do that same action for a long amount of time. Go. Now the speed, try that action really fast. Uh-huh, now try it slowly. Now try your action with a steady beat. Ba, 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 ba. Now try your action with an uneven beat. Might feel kind of funny. And everybody's is different, which is awesome. Cool. Imagine in your head a quick beat and do it to that quicker beat. Now imagine in your head a slower beat and do it to that slower beat. Great. Now put some different accents into your movement. And do it at a regular time. Mm-hmm. Now at an unpredictable time where I don't know what you're going to do next. Cool, and go back to a regular rhythm with your movement. Whatever it is, maybe you're punching, marching, walking, stepping, pushing, whatever it is, do it right on a rhythm. Your rhythm might not be the same as the other people around you, but as long as you know your rhythm, you're good. Great, now do it with a free rhythm. Maybe your movement is a little bit more loose now. Maybe you're matching it to some breath. Maybe you're just feeling how you wanna follow the movement without a specific rhythm. Excellent, and that is felt time instead of rhythmic time. Okay, friends, great job. Come back, have a seat, 
Brush your shoulders off. Take a breath. Awesome. So now let's read a little more in depth about this element of time. If you have a teacher in the room that would like to call on a few readers to read these out loud, awesome. I like to have a different reader for each paragraph. Feel free to pause me and do that now. Otherwise, I'll go ahead and read it with you. The key word for the element of time is when. Human movement is naturally rhythmic in the broad sense that we alternate activity and rest. Breath and waves are examples of rhythms in nature that repeat, but not as consistently as in a metered rhythm. So everything has rhythm, right? We have a time to play, a time to work, a time to rest, even within our own lives. Everything has a rhythm, right? Spoken word and conversation also have rhythm and dynamics. But these timing patterns are characteristically more inconsistent and unpredictable. Right, so when we're talking to each other, we don't always talk like this right on a beat, right? That would be weird. But sometimes it can feel good to talk on a beat when we're doing music or dance or other things that have a rhythm sometimes. Rhythmic patterns may be metered or free rhythm. Much of Western music uses repeating patterns, 2-4 or 3-4, for example, but concepts of time and meter are used very differently throughout the world. Dance movements may also show different timing relationships, such as simultaneous or sequential timing, brief to long duration, fast to slow speed, or accents in predictable or unpredictable intervals, which we just played with a little bit. Time can also be organized in other ways, including clock time. This unit is based on seconds, minutes, or hours. For example, a certain section of a dance may be assigned a time such as 30 seconds into which all the choreographed movement must fit, right? I tell you, okay, make a dance phrase and you have 30 seconds to do it. That's a specific amount of time. Or a, or, or a performance, right? It may be set up to repeat continuously between noon and one. We might say, hey, our performance is at noon, everybody come. That's a specific clock time for our dance performance. But there's also something that I think uh, we use more in conversation, but less when we're talking about dance, and it's sensed time. Meaning, instead of saying, hey, we all do this when the music says these words or this, this lyric or this beat, we're all sensing something together. Think about a bow, right? It's often not the case that there's a musical cue for a bow at the end of like an assembly or something, right? It's more that we feel the people around us and we bow together. So it requires really feeling the other people around you. Dancers pick up on each other's timing, such as gradually increasing from a walking to a running by cueing off of each other rather than the music. Another example, when dancers hold a group shape and then start to move out of it based on organic impulse. So it's more organic, less defined. Event sequence, an internal or external event signals a change such as a repeating traveling phrase over and over until everyone arrives at the corner of a stage. So these are just different examples of how time can be organized in dance. Or you might see this at a sport event when a touchdown triggers a cheer. So that's an event, a touchdown triggers something else, a cheer. And this can happen in dance too, right? When Jose gets to the middle of the, of the stage, then Anna goes off the stage. Right? One thing happens, the other thing triggers it. And it's not from the music, it's from the event. Dancers may take sight cues from each other to start the next phrase. Kind of like what I just said. Or they might take events from an event, such as a train whistle outdoors. The inherent rhythms in our movement and our landscape are a rich source of variation in dance. Whew, those were a lot of words, but I hope you get the idea that there's a lot of variation 
in how dancers use time. So now we're gonna watch a brief video clip, super brief, and I want you to watch for how they're using time. Is it a regular beat? How do things happen? How do we see and hear the changes in timing? What is cueing the dancers, telling them to move from one thing to another? Okay, interesting, right? That um, was from a dance called Seeds of Wind, choreography by Wynne Frick, who I have actually met before. Um, she lives in Minnesota, and this was the Xenon Dance Company. Um, so how did those dancers use time? Was that super strict, like, on the beat? Or was it more free-flowing? What do you think? Strict rhythm or free-flowing? If you said free-flowing, I would agree with you, right? They were sort of moving around in a more free-flowing way that didn't conform to a strict eight count. Most of the dances that we do, I'm gonna make myself bigger. Oh, hey. Most of the dances that we do in our classes tend to be very rhythmic, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's a way that we use time and organize time on the rhythm, right? But these dancers organize time in a very different way. They were moving to a different sense of time, right? Did you see that? Yeah. How were they being cued? A cue is a signal to do something different. You might have said that chime, right? That sound in the music. And what was their relationship to that sound? Sometimes they moved after it. So it was the sound and then they responded to it. Sometimes they moved at the same time as that chime sound. So it was pre-choreographed in unison, meaning at the same time. Sometimes they even did it beforehand. So it was like the dancers were cueing the music. So they were playing with all sorts of relationship of the dance to time. And going back to our elements of dance graphic real quick, let's look at the column of time and use some of that language to describe what we just saw. Were the movements brief or long? How long did they last? I mean, some of both, right? I saw some of both. Um, speed, were their movements fast or slow? I saw some of both. Beat, was it steady or uneven? I think it was uneven, right? You couldn't really predict when the dancers were gonna change from one movement to another. In fact, there were multiple dancers doing multiple movements, right? So it was an unsteady beat. Was the tempo quick or slow? Well, the music was changing, so I think that's hard to say. 
accent. Could you identify what, what sound was the accent? Yeah, there was like a ding that um, triggered some of the movement. Rhythmic pattern, was it a, we talked about this, a rhythmic pattern or was it free flowing? More free flowing. And then we talked about the timing relationship of the ding and how they were moving. Awesome. So this is so useful for describing dance, duration, speed, beat, tempo, accent, rhythmic pattern, and timing relationship. Okay. Finally, it's our turn to put some of this knowledge about time into action. It is time to, ha ha, that was a joke. It is time to use time. <laughs> oh, Miss Susanna. Okay, so take a look. First, we are gonna think back to the dance phrase that we made up when we were studying action. We basically chose four actions and put them together. Yes, if you don't remember what four actions you chose last time, it's totally okay. I don't even remember what four actions I chose when we did it together. So you can choose four new ones, yeah? The example they give is twist, float, jump, and triplet turn. Ugh. But you can choose your own four. Turn, jump, hop, push, whatever, okay? So think back or choose a new four simple actions. Cool beans? Great. And then we're gonna be putting some variations on that. So first, I'm gonna just give you a minute to recreate your four actions. So stand back up. You have one minute to recreate action one, two, three, four, so that you are able to do it without um, thinking about it too much, okay? So take it away. You have one minute to rehearse your four actions. Go. Okay, friends, come on back. I hope you have your four actions. Remember, they do not have to be complicated. Okay, so come take a look at the second part of this time assignment. So now we are gonna change the timing of part of our dance phrase to create at least two new variations. What is a variation? It's where we change something about our dance phrase. So maybe before, all four actions had the exact same amount of time. I remember that when I shared mine, I was like, jump, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Spin, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hop, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Whatever, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. My point being, I know that I did mine in a very rhythmic way where each action got the same amount of time. Maybe you did it that way too. But now it's time to change it up. You're gonna create a variation. So here are some ideas. You could go slower or faster for the entire phrase, or you could go slower or faster for each of the different movements. Maybe one goes slower, one goes faster, okay? You could vary the duration. Maybe one lasts longer and one is lasting a shorter amount of time. 
You could add accents or syncopations. You could use freestyle timing rather than dancing to music with a regular beat. Now I know we're not each really choosing our own music just because we don't have a lot of time, but you could think about how that would affect your choice. Um, you could coordinate the movement with, with your breath, kind of like in yoga, or any other idea of your own, okay? Since we don't have a lot of time, I'm gonna encourage you to maybe focus on the first couple to vary how slow or fast the piece is or to vary how slow or fast some of the movements are. I'm now gonna give you two, mo two minutes to work on your piece. Now remember, you're creating two different variations. So let's create a first variation, then we'll create a second variation. Ready, steady, go work on it. Okay, friends, awesome. Great. Now we're gonna create variation number two. So pick something different that you are gonna change about time. Maybe you're focusing on a different one of your four actions, or maybe before you tried slow and now you're trying fast. I don't know, create another variation. Okay, awesome friends. Wow, okay, it's time to do a little share out. I hope that if you are in a Google Meet or something like that, you can go on gallery view and um, we're just gonna all perform our variations, okay? So variation number one, and then variation number two. So since we're playing with time, right? Some people's might take longer and some people's might be shorter and that's obviously okay. Once you can see that everybody is still and not moving, then we will know that everybody has gone. Cool. So I'm not gonna give you music because that would affect your sense of time. We're just gonna all do variation one at the same time. All right, ready, set, go. Okay. 
And I'm just going to guess that people have come to stillness. Excellent job. Let's perform variation number two. Ready, set, go. Awesome, friends. I'm sure it was beautiful. You are going to fill out a little uh, Google form, I believe, that we are sending to you. And here are the questions I would love for you to answer in some form, whether it's the Google form or, or in a journal. I would love for you to answer these questions at the bottom here. So describe how you change the timing in each variation, okay? Go ahead and write it down. Variation number one, how did you change the timing? And variation number two, how did you change the timing? Between your original phrase and the two variations, which one is the most intriguing to you? Which one did you think was the most interesting? Why? All right, friends. Thank you so much for trying something brand new with me today. I hope that you learned a lot about time. I hope you explored it and tried something new today. And I wish that I could see every single one of your creations because I'm sure that they were creative and amazing. Mwah! I will see you next week. Miss Susanna, out. <laughs>